Today we're going to look at uh, how to call a stored procedure from a Microsoft SQL Server 2008 database and uh, then we're going to process some information and, and bring a JavaScript alert box up with some of that information. So we're going to pass multiple parameters to the stored procedure and then process some information and send back the JavaScript to uh, show us the total sales for a given customer. So here's the functionality. When you click on a row, uh, we're going to bring up a JavaScript prompt box. It's going to ask you to enter in a year. In this case, we've got 1996. When we click OK, the callback fires, the stored procedure is called, and we get the total sales for that customer for that given year. I'll go ahead and do it again. We'll just click on a different customer. Uh, in this case, I'm going to enter in a bogus year, so we'll say some a year that doesn't exist, whatever it is, okay? And it'll just say, no, you can't do that. So let's go ahead here, and we'll just change it to 97. And so now we have the total sales for that customer in 97. So let's look at some of the code behind this. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is let's take a look at the, uh, the query itself. So this is tied to our connection name called SQL Server, which is tied to the Northwinds database. We're using the invoices view and make sure that we have a primary key selected as customer ID. If you don't select a primary key for a view, what will happen is we can't populate the E object with um, data that we return from the selected row. So you have to make sure you have a selected, uh, a primary key selected. Then we just have some fields that we're displaying in the grid, customer ID, customer name, city, region, extended price, and order date. And let's go look at some of the properties. First thing we want to take a look at is uh, row events. So we've got an on-click event handler, and the on-click event handler is just doing a it's calling this function do callback under bar v1. It is here we're using a set timeout JavaScript function which says in 50 milliseconds call do callback under bar v1. We use this because when you select the row, we have to wait a bit for the row to actually be selected. Otherwise, you may get the previous row or the previously selected row. So that's why we use this function right here. And we only we only need it because of the um, essentially the event propagation in the grid. So um, now let's go take a look at the JavaScript function that we're calling. So in this case, it's do callback under bar v1. So this function is going to pass data from the current row into the E object and we're going to pass in an additional parameter which is the year that you select in the uh, in the uh, prompt box. So uh, we start out by first we determine the row number and the customer name so we set up a JavaScript a variable here, row number, and we use the grid grid object and selected row to to our underbar selected row. We record the selected row in row num, and then the customer name. We get the value of the customer name, and we we do that specifically so that we can show it in the prompt box. Then we jump into a uh, a while loop and and what we do is we set this okay as a, it's a, essentially a, it's a boolean variable we set it to false so it just says while not okay it's going to stay in this loop so that we make sure we get valid information here we bring up the prompt box the javascript prompt box and we put a default value in of uh, 1996 and then we use a JavaScript switch statement, which is really helpful in a situation like this because we have multiple cases. So here we say case, case it's an empty string, or case null. Well, case null occurs if you hit the X in the upper right-hand uh, corner of the box. So this, this means you didn't enter in anything. Uh, we want to go ahead and set OK to true because we want to break out of this loop and break uh, breaks us out of the switch statement. 
Now we look for 1996, 1997, or 1998. Those are the valid years. So if they're true, then we're going to head, go ahead and we set the do call bat flag, which was set to false up here. So this means, okay, we're going to do the callback, and then we break out of this uh, switch statement. And then the default value is just going to be an alert telling us what the valid values uh, are. So once we break out of this while loop, we come into this if statement and it just says if do callback, meaning if do, do callback is true, then initiate this callback. And notice what I want you to look at closely here is where we are using uh, the row num, which we, we computed up here. This is our x basic function that we're going to call. And here is where we're going to pass in information. So we here we have the under bar get data equals true, which means since this is a read-only grid, it means um, tell alpha 5 to populate the E object with uh, data from the current row. And then this value year, here we're setting a uh, parameter of year, and we're passing in this uh, year from this very this JavaScript variable right here. So we're going to pass that year into our X basic function and then that's going to be passed back to the stored procedure. I have another function which is version 2 of this that operates a little bit differently. We'll take a look at that a bit later. So from here let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, X basic that's involved. And this is the, again, there, you're going to see two functions in here. We're going to be working with the first one, which is to get the total from the stored procedure version one. Here we, so the this is the function name that we call. Uh, if you'd like, you can uncomment this debug one statement so we can actually look at, say, for example, E if we want to understand what it is customer ID with e dot underbar current row data new dot customer ID. So the cust this is the, the actual field name there. Here we add these arguments. We open up the connection string, which is going to open up the uh, Northwinds database. If that's OK, we're going to go ahead and, it, and right here is where we execute the sales by customer year, that's our stored procedure, and we're passing in two arguments, cust ID and year, and these were set right up in, in here. If you want, you can actually pass values through in, in, in this case, but that is not, that's not recommended. Uh, the, the recommended process is define your arguments and pass them in as arguments. And ultimately, here, the result set will come back from the stored procedure. And then once we have that result set, we need to pull some information out. And then we need to send back the JavaScript code that's going to display this information. So this code right in here, just simply, we start building a string that's generating JavaScript. So here we set a, a JavaScript variable total. And here we call a, uh, this is an, a, a JavaScript function from the Alpha 5 library that formats the string the way we'd like it to with the dollar sign in uh, two decimal places and so on. And this carriage return line feed really doesn't need to be here, but if you want to look at what's coming back in Firefox, it'll look nice and pretty. You'll have two lines of code. And then here we just add to JS alert, and, and here we just display the information that we've computed up in here. Finally, we just set the return value of this function to the JS string, which is the JavaScript. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the stored procedure that we're calling. 
So this is the stored procedure. This is now we're in uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server Management Studio. And this is the definition of the stored procedure. And here you can see the two parameters that we're passing in. And here we're just generating the sum of all the orders for that given customer between the first of the year and the end of the year. And so this passes back the information to our XBasic and then the XBasic generates the JavaScript that ultimately is displayed in the browser. So let's go back to working preview again. See this in action. Just click on a row. You know, we'll specify a different year. So let's pick 1998. And there are callback occurred, our start procedure fired, and we got the total sales for that customer in 1998. Now one of the things we might want to do here, let's go back to design, go into uh, our XBasic function. I'm going to uncomment this debug statement so that now what's going to happen is this de the debugger is going to fire. So we're going to go ahead and use working preview here. And now I'm going to click on the, a row. We'll get our prompt box. And now the debugger will fire. So we're paused at this point. Now we can start looking at stuff. So if I want to look at E, for example, if I type in E and just hit Enter, we'll see the E object. And now we can start looking at all the properties of the E object. So, for example, if you wanted to know, well, gee, is the, is the data really being passed. Well, here it is. So this is e dot underbar current row data new. And then we can see all the different values being passed in. So this is a this is something you really want to know about when you start developing um, callbacks and, and 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 this type of thing. So you can look at the X basic, you can understand what's happening with the objects and so on. It makes it a lot easier to uh, to debug. So uh, once again we're inside the debugger. I can now just launch it, just say run I'll, and I'll close it and then you'll see that the of course the stored procedure fired and the um, JavaScript was computed and sent back to the browser and, and that's what brings up this alert box here. So that uh, that should sum it up for our first lesson in how to call a stored procedure and pass parameters from a grid component using an AJAX callback. In the next section, we'll look at a different way of doing this. We'll pass in the customer ID and the year rather than referencing the customer ID in the, in the row itself.